welcome everybody to our first episode of Life is Cooler with AC. Should I look at you right now? No. I don't know. I'll look at you guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm Alex Cunningham, and uh, I am super pumped. This is the first episode, and I knew exactly who I wanted to have on the first episode, and that is Maggie Mayfield. I was so honored. And you, like, <laughs> waited weeks, too. I did. You I know. Did. We've been rescheduled five times. Has it been that many times? No, but it feels like I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it was perfect. Um, you know, like, there, there's a few reasons why I wanted to have you first, okay. right? Um, I'm only going to tell you two of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. His life is in the other room. And that's why I eat it now. <laughs> you have to guess the rest. But... <laughs> no, uh, so whenever I first saw you at Domingo's Mic, I was like super funny. And like the way that you, you guys don't know yet, but she plays guitar uh, with her comedy. So we're both comedians. I feel like I should probably disclose that. But so when you were playing your guitar, <laughs> I was like, this is perfect, this is great, I want to interview her. Wow, so, okay, thanks. So there's one reason. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second reason we'll get to a little bit later. Okay. All right, uh, we'll see, try and remind me, because I'll forget. Okay. <laughs> but so, um, with that being said, um, what got you into comedy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, the short story is I was going through a divorce and at the time I was working on the radio as an on-air personality okay. and I just had more to say than I could say on the radio. <laughs> so uh-huh. I just signed up for an open mic. I didn't tell anybody and I was like, oh, this is really fun. Nobody hated me and then I just kept going. And like six months later, people were like, oh, you do comedy now? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a good way to start. Uh, I definitely, I feel like mine was, uh, I always wanted, like I was an asshole, you know, like I always wanted to be like a winner. Did you? Yeah. I, mean, I still am, but um, are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's like not my experience. At all. <laughs> well, I don't know. I feel like that one mic uh, where I was drinking a lot. Do you remember that one either? What, like, what no. Was all I know is like one time I had a show and my guitar went so far out of tune, and you came up and you were like knight in shining armor. You're like, here's a tuner for your guitar. <laughs> it was mortifying. It's so mortifying when that happens. It is, but that's what I try to be real discreet, just like, hey, you know, whatever. Yeah. I got, I got a tuner on my phone. We're good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did too, but I was like, I gotta record myself because I need. <laughs> I need content for TikTok. It's crazy. <laughs> and now I have this little asshole in front of me holding the phone. I just bought a new guitar that has like the tuner in it. Smart. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I can't, I can't <laughs> yeah. go through this anymore. <laughs> that's awesome. But no, like that's what I like about comedy is that like you can be worlds apart, which I feel like we actually have a lot of like not the same story, but like with you being in LA and you know like doing all oh, that yeah. stuff, like very similar. But you just you meet so many different people, yeah. you know, like it, who who knows who's gonna be in the crowd when this man's in the pocket. Yeah. You, Surprisingly, you just... every show I've ever done where that's happened, <laughs> there's been someone that's like come up to save me. Well, that's, I felt bad because you were like, "Is that a tune?" And the crowd was like, "We don't know." We yeah, don't you know. can. Yes, and I was can. like, yes, we, "We can. We can tell." <laughs> and yeah. like, again, like. I don't know if that's like the, the music part of me or like yeah. the, the perfectionist part of yeah. me or maybe all of it. I was like, we got to fix this. Yeah. Yeah. No, you saved the show. Yeah. Yeah, but it w- turned out super well. I mean, except for the people that were like making out the whole time. You remember oh, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, that was weird. That was weird. But, you know, I feel like that's kind of people that talk about like the comedy grind, you know, like what, is, what does it take to, to get there? And like doing a set next to two people who can't take their tongues out of each other's mouth. Like that's what. That's what it takes. Priorities. Right? You're yeah. right. Exactly. That is the they real hustle. They had a lot to drink that night. I know, and they wouldn't shut up. You yeah, they did that? talk a lot. We'd be like, "Hey guys, uh, does anybody have kids?" Well, we don't. But guess what? We watch our neighbors' kids. Like, what? That's not even the question. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I'm just trying to do relatable material. <laughs> I know. Like, like, not relatable. Go back to kissing. You're ruining the show. <laughs> right. <laughs> but no, like that. It was such a fun night. But there's always like, I feel like every show you. Mm-hmm. That are just super like mm-hmm. memorable, you know, yeah. if you will. Yeah, but that yeah, I think that was the first show. That, I think that was that the only show that Tony did. I think so. For now. For now. Yeah, but no, I oh back to the story. I'll deviate and go all over the place today. Um, but no, do you remember uh, you were you you were doing an open mic? You were covering for somebody over Shakespeare. Oh yeah, for joy. Is that where I met you? No, we had met one other time at, oh. the, at Domingo's night, oh, okay. and uh, I went up there, and the bartender was wearing a shirt that, like, 
came to hear and, and, and she kept raising her hand and, and she's like I'm flashing everybody and I was like how are you gonna say that when like I'm writing your tip and you haven't flashed me uh-huh. I'm like scratch yeah. that shit out yeah. but I was drunk and I was like you know things are funny when you're drunk yeah so I was like I'm gonna talk about this on stage and everybody was just super uncomfortable yeah do you remember now uh, vaguely oh yeah I, I'm glad you don't yeah you know, which I'm glad you I don't. got dumped that day but yeah you were there I literally, it was like that day I got dumped, I'm sure. Well, I think I hit on you, so I think that maybe I ended up better. Maybe. Probably. I don't know. I was just like sad and crying. You're like, wow, this little piece of shit's the one that's going to try and hit on me tonight. You know what, this though? Like, guy. I don't know about you, but like when I'm sad, I'm funnier. I either say, like, listen, if you're going to break my heart, two things could happen. I'm going to get skinnier or funnier. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what's happening. Yeah. See, I would, when I'm sad, I'm like, I'm gonna go home and beat my wife. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we're gonna get canceled. It's your first episode. <laughs> we like to make it real awkward. Here. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to Life is Cooler with AC, everybody. You never know what the fuck we're gonna talk about. Uh, oh, speaking of, we're just gonna go ahead and go to the ice box. My wife created this for me. Um, so we asked a lot of people online, just random, you know, like give us random questions to ask. You know, mm-hmm. so we can do it one time. We can do it seventeen. I think you need a sound bite of that sentence. We can do it one time. We can do it seven <laughs> times. <laughs> this is going to apply to so many things. <laughs> that, honestly, I think that that could be my catchphrase. I think so. That, that's well, it. I think you found it. <laughs> that's the one. All right. They're all popular, but it's very, like, is she a teacher? Does she teach? Uh, she is married to a pop singer. So yeah. she's like, this, I feel like this is the only way that it can make sense. I'm just going to tell you, like, that's every woman, okay? That's, it's, you're not just the only, you're, it's every Yeah, but woman. I'm actually toddler size. Okay, that's you know? okay. Yeah. See, and, like, my jokes are like toddlers. I'm like, look at my penis. You know, that's <laughs> like that. I feel like that's what toddlers say. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, you ready for this? This is by, this is from Kai Engel. He wants to know. Uh, when making eye contact, do you look at one eye or switch between both? That's a good question. That's a fucking weird question. <laughs> That's a thought that somebody has. Like, I've never thought about that in my whole life. See, do I you have. look between, like, one. Actually, maybe, you know what? When you watch movies and you see the girl looking, like, back and forth, I'm like, what is she doing? See? Yeah, exactly. Weird. Yeah. yeah, especially whenever she's looking into the camera and you're like, there's not another eye. You're like, what is she looking what is she at? Looking at? <laughs> I don't know. Is it is it sexier when you do like the back and forth? See, I don't know because like uh, in my day job, I'm in sales, so like when I talk to people, I'm like just pick an eye. Yeah. Because I don't want them to think that I'm like spazzing out. I'm like, oh hey, back yeah. and forth. Like I just did a line of coke before I started doing this. Who wrote this question? Uh, Kai Kyle. Engel. Kai. Now you've just given me something to fucking worry about. <laughs> Thank you for adding to the anxiety, Kai. <laughs> That's what you just did. You're going to be on stage now looking at people and like, oh, fuck. What am I doing right now? I just want to do the sexier thing, whatever that is. Just pick an eye. Just pick an eye. Okay. Pick an eye and then bite. Yeah, bite your lips. See, <laughs> See? yeah. Right. Maggie Mayfield. All right, everyone. all right, all right. <laughs> That's it. That's it. They say if you can't be funny on stage, be interesting. And right. So that. You know. You're gonna be like, does anybody here have any kids? <laughs> Dad. <laughs> They're gonna be like, oh fuck, I hope you don't, because you're gonna explain to them later. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because <laughs> they don't know which eye I'm looking right. at. <laughs> <laughs> they have epilepsy before they're even five. <laughs> yeah, it's my fault because I can't look into them <laughs> their eye. <laughs> no, I think the worst part is like, have you ever met anybody that's got like one eye or like one eye's like the googly eye? I'm, I'm, I used to work with a lady who had a glass eye. Okay, yeah. Um, and you couldn't really tell, like, she was so pretty and she had bangs and, like, she was so pretty. I don't know why she didn't, why she had a glass eye, but I do remember it. This was at our radio station and <laughs> our, our morning show guy at our Christmas party, um, <laughs> decided to, so we decided to play a joke on the, on the morning show guy. And so she, she was like, hey, Rob, do you want to, do you want another 
no, no, they're old fashioned. He's like, no, I'm almost done. No, 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 let's get another old fashioned. Get on. So she put her eye in the drink. <laughs> And they take a second. She's like, "Look at you!" Oh my god, it's so gross. He was That's like, awesome. Ugh. Can you imagine like putting that back in? Like, does yeah. that sting? It must. No, it'd be clean, clean as fuck. He's like, "Let's see if it's a whiskey." But would you be drunk off of it? Because you know how like your inner tissues are like that sounds weird. Uh, are like so much more absorbent than yeah. This is this is weird. That tastes like an orange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving on, moving past it. Yeah. So, but uh, no, like when somebody has like you know a, a weird eye or you know like deformed, and like I find myself that's when I'm like back and forth. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, this is the one time I should pick a fucking eye. Yeah. <laughs> I'm mean, eye eye stuff is freaky. It freaks me out. I hate talking about eye stuff. It's just like, just like wow, thanks God. Like, thanks for making this fucking awful for my first guess. Look. I like scratch. What's that? Is your cornea? Cornea? It's your cornea. Sure. I scratched a cornea when I was a kid, and so I felt like for a whole summer I had to wear an eye patch, and now <laughs> today I can't. I can't. It's, can't. My wife got uh, LASIK surgery a few yeah. years ago, right before we left LA, and she was like so scared that she was gonna like peel it back or you know do some weird shit. And they put these like it was like if you popped the glass out of like safety glasses and then like just duct taped it to her face. So she looked like this bug for like four days. Amazing. It was hilarious. That had to be fun for you. It was. <laughs> I took so many pictures. She was so pissed. Uh huh. So if you ever wonder what it's like to scratch your cornea, she could have asked her. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so another question that I have to ask you uh, your name, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Juana Hill. And. Maggie Mayfield? Yeah. No. Maggie oh, okay. is like my real name. It's actually not even my real name. But oh, really? It's Margaret, but nobody oh, called me that, right? right. So like, yeah. And the way it's spelled is M-A-G-G-I. I didn't pick that. My mom picked that. Because she was like, I don't want you to be nicknamed Peggy or Margie or something right, weird. Yeah. But Maggie uh, was my mom's best friend as a kid. And oh, it was okay. spelled like that. But Margaret is her mom. Gotcha. So that's where that all came from. But Mayfield, that's I got married to get that, and I didn't even know that it was cool yeah. until we were getting a divorce. <laughs> my ex mother in law put in the paperwork. She was like, "You're gonna need to give that name back." Can all they right. do that? Like, is that legal? I mean, yeah, you put in the paperwork. I signed it, and I was like, "Okay," but I mean, no. I mean, I tell this on stage. I tell this joke on stage. I was like, "No, I already." website right yeah. you know? like, I'm not I'm not going back on it's it. the name of my podcast <laughs> right, right. So, but uh yeah okay well so, so that kind of changes it a little bit but how, like how often do you get people come up and say you are your story like oh every day yeah all the that, time. that's what I figured because like I love that song and like I'm really so, I sing truly, two lines of it wake up Maggie eyes you want to keep going yeah I said two lines. Oh, yeah, but it's my singing voice that... Oh, okay. Just keep going. I think I got something to say to you. It's late September. Okay, all right, yeah. Like, most I know. People, yeah, like, most people don't know past that first line, which is irritating. Why? Yeah, that's great. So I, there's the tra- I cover that song on my CD that I brought for you. Okay. Um, <laughs> Which, I know, it's a CD. You're like, what is this old piece of equipment? <laughs> <laughs> no, believe it or not, I still have a CD player in my closet. And I'm impressed. Yeah, I do too, Mike. But, uh, you know, that was a, a, I didn't think of that when I was like, let's go on tour, I need merch. Uh, I thought, yeah, anyway, um, so now I give them away for free on podcasts. You could have one of your own to listen to in your car. You can also just um, download it on Amazon. Buy it through your car. Or iTunes, yeah. Uh, yeah, or reach out at maggiemayfield.com. I will send you one. They're 10 bucks plus shipping and handling. <laughs> um, but you see, the first track on there is Maggie May. Okay. And so, like, I do this whole thing where I talk about the song and, like, what it actually means. And it's about a prostitute. And people oh, all the time are like, are you named after that song? I'm like, my parents are hippies, but they're not that <laughs> ter- You know, they're not terrible human beings. Right. You know? So. That's, I, you know, I, like, and I'm not joking. Like, I'm a huge fan of that song. Okay. So, um, I've never made that I was more, like, interested in the fact that he's like, uh, should I follow my dad's footsteps, you know, and, like, a living out of playing pool. Like, he was trying to figure out, like, what he was going to do with his life. Yeah. Never considered, like, 
how does Maggie feel? <laughs> like, that was never part yeah. of the... Well, that's why it's called Wake Up Maggie, because it's a spoof off of that. Right, yeah, yeah. okay. So, uh... What's so okay, oh, so yeah. what's really interesting is, like, I've had this dream about making this album for a long time. So I used to work for a radio station in Los Angeles called Coast 102.5. Okay. And Rod Stewart was a very close friend of the station, and he okay. would be on all the time. So Ellen Kay in the morning one time was interviewing him, and I was her board op, um, which just means I was pushing all the buttons for her to help record while she did the interview. And uh, and she was like, just so you know, comedian Maggie Mayfield is in here and wants to write an album. Um, and originally what I was going to call it was like, how Rod Stewart ruins my life. <laughs> and he thought that was so funny. He was like, I need to meet her. I need to meet her. <laughs> so, uh, That's awesome. Yeah, but so it, it came into, this seems, this seems bad. This is bad. Yeah. This, this well, but see, like, I'm so glad that you have already done the the legwork for me, because my question, like, what, since I knew that you were coming today, like, it's been stuck in my head all day, you the know, song. And the song, and like, you can ask my wife, I listen to this song probably two to three times a week, like, all the time, and, and such yeah, an old soul, <laughs> yeah, and like, then I'll listen to like, uh, ooh la la, you know that one, mm-hmm. from the faces, mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, like a deep cut, a deep Rod Stewart cut kind of. No, so I used to listen to the song and I was like, that sounds so much like Rod Stewart, but it's not, oh, okay. right? Yeah. But so I was like, who's the lead singer of this band? And he said Rod Stewart, and I was like, what? what? That doesn't make any sense. Turns out, uh, like the guitar player sang on this one song. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was like, what are the chances of that? That's you know? crazy. Yeah, super weird. But so like I've been listening to this song and uh, I was like, is that a turn off when guys come up to you and they're like. Wake up, Maggie. Uh, you know, it's probably like anyone. You know what I mean? Like you meet a really tall guy, and you're like, "Oh, you play basketball!" Like they hear it all the time. You right, know what I mean? Yeah. So it's the people that get creative with it. You know, right. like when I see a really tall guy now, I'm always like, "Oh, do you play golf?" You oh, know? The, yeah. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. Like because they they don't hear that. Right. But it's a spoof on like yeah what they hear. So when they get creative with it, it's like, See, and that makes sense. You know, because uh, like I all the time, all, all the time. I'm sure. You know, yeah. so it's like, does that bother me? Of course not. It irritates me that you're not original. You know? Yeah, it's like, exactly. Yeah, it's like, be funny. Be like, uh, you know. Um, or be humble about it. Yeah. You know, the people that are like, I'm sure you get this all the time. It's like, you know what I mean? Right, like, yeah. Exactly. If they were like kind about it, it's like, yeah, you, you know. Right, yeah, for sure. See, and, and I feel like that would be the proper approach, mm-hmm. you know, that I would be that one guy that I'm like, this is going to be so original. Well, yeah. not that one guy. I'm going to be like that. The million guys. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, you've never heard this before, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, because uh, that's Maggie May Field. You know, it's also called Maggie May. So I was like, I don't know if you just, because a lot of people have stage names. So I was uh-huh. like, maybe she just did this and was like, I'm going to do it first. No, that's my name. I mean, legally, it's Margaret Mayfield. <laughs> that's what it says on my, I know, that's what it says on my ID. So I didn't, I didn't pick it. But don't call me Margaret, because then I'll feel like I'm in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, and anytime that somebody's like uh, Alexander, I'm like uh, my brother and my wife calls me that. So yeah, yeah, that's it. So yeah. when you do it, it makes me uncomfortable. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just call you Maggie. You yeah, think? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll probably just make it. I got one that calls you Rose. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how long have you been in Austin? I got here December 2020. Okay, so you were so, part of that like an initial rush out of LA. Yeah, but like. Not on purpose. My okay. it came it came kind of backwards. I was going through a, a breakup, another breakup. Man, I have a lot of breakup stories. I should be way skinnier and way funnier. Uh, uh, I, yeah, you know, we were. Th- this guy I was dating in LA. Um, we we had an opportunity to leave because of his employer. I left it myself, and so uh, we jumped on it and took it, and actually went to Florida for okay. a month. But yeah, Why do you say Florida. I grew up in Florida. Okay. 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 See, it is a different world down there. Are you from LA? No. Where are you from? New Jersey. Oh, okay. So you're from the East Coast anyway. Yeah. What part of Jersey? The Central part, right outside of Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty soon, you know, we're like, it's so everyone says it's like San Diego, but right. So the the nice part. I didn't see it in Jersey. But so I've got friends from uh, Jersey, you know, and like one's from Atlantic City. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, you have you been to Atlantic City? Down the shore? Yeah, of course. You have? Wow, you're the only person that's ever been to Atlantic City, Atlantic City and you're like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Most people are like, ah, oh, we 
because <laughs> I had a friend from Philadelphia, and he's like, oh, Atlantic City? And I was like, you're from Philadelphia. And he's like, I know. It's so close. I mean, it's like Philadelphia. So where I grew up, we went on field, field trips as kids, uh, and you either went to Philadelphia or you went to New York because it's right. that close. Yeah. It's that close. Yeah, I just, yeah, I've heard that it's it's rough. Atlantic City? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you want to talk. You see me in the AC! <laughs> <laughs> that would be a fun spinoff. That, that would. Is. Yeah, maybe I'm going to move now. Wow, thanks, Maggie. No, just... but you need to do like a week-long like, spring break edition out there. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. Just interview random crackheads. I like how you like jump to move. I like, <laughs> need to like uproot my whole life just for this cool <laughs> one. <laughs> it's like how Maggie changed her name I for know. this song. I'm going to change my life for this podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... But no, so being from Jersey and then the the face with Florida. But it's it's its own world. It is. It really yeah. is very different. And I wasn't there very long. It was only like a month. Um, what part of Florida? It was like on the beach, like uh, Boca Raton. Okay, yeah. Like beach. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, it's so. It's just so different. It is. It's yeah. so different. Just like Texas is so different than oh, anywhere I've ever lived. Sure. Also. Um, yeah, so anyway, so that didn't, we, we couldn't make it work. And right. so I just, uh, I don't know how much to live and came back to Austin. So I actually have family here. I didn't, oh, okay. I, nice. didn't I didn't yeah, come was... here to like do comedy. I was like, oh, I'll do some comedy in Austin. Right, yeah. Right. Hey, I'm and then everyone's here. like, you followed Rogan. I'm like, nah. I know, well, that that's what's so good. hard. So, because um, we lived in LA, uh, we left because COVID shut everything down. Yeah. And it was just like, economically, it didn't make sense to pay. Yep. You know, and not having jobs. And not know. having opportunities. Exactly. Yeah. So it was like, can we go back to Indiana, which is a little bit away from home? Okay. So we did that, and we were like, it's safe for a year, you know, and then we'll, we'll see what happens. In Indiana? And, yeah. Okay. And it was like, it just so happened that things started opening up. Texas was like, hey, we're here now, you know, yeah. and then all the comedians were like, oh, so are we, you know? So it was like, my wife was like, I want something, you know, like if, if we're going to keep chasing your dream, I have to make sure my dreams are being chased as I well. Yeah, you know, and like she makes all the money for all the money. Um, so <laughs> she's like, we're going to buy a house and we're going to do it uh, close to Austin. And that way we can, move, you know, like move forward for both of us. Great. And I was like, yeah, that's fitting, you know. And yeah. then it just so happened that, you know, like Rogan was here and everybody, which I still haven't met. All my friends, like, were have like. Have him? Yeah, no, 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 no. They're like, have you met Joe yet? And I'm like, yeah, he just fucking stands on the street corner. And he's like, oh, you're a comedian. Nice to meet you. Like, of course not. It's the same with LA. Like, I know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, what are the odds? Like, I used to sell uh, Red Wing shoes mm -hmm. uh, in Berkeley. So, like, I sold uh, Matt Damon shoes. I sold a bunch of people shoes. But, like, through their assistance, right? Yeah. But, but like, I gave them the shoes for them. Mm -hmm. But it's like, that doesn't mean anything either. It's like, they were so much like, I don't want to meet these people that they sent somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, you think that I'm just going to walk in and be like, Hey everybody, I'm a comedian, and Joe Rogan's like, "You gotta come meet me first. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like, no. come on now. Yeah. No, but it is cool though. Like, he doesn't uh, have time. This podcast is like seven hours. I know. <laughs> Every day, it's so long. I know. How are we gonna match that today? Ooh, we're not. Oh, okay. That's not happening. <laughs> I've got like therapy, you know. I've got more talking to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> but see, hopefully, I mean, I'm gonna, tr I'm not gonna charge you as much. Close. A t shirt and a CD. Right. Yeah. Or I might charge you a small fee. There was another question I was going to ask you. Oh, motivation. Here we go. So, comedy is super tough. We, mm -hmm. we just know that. Um, wh why? Like, what makes you keep wanting to do comedy? Because it's always, I've got people always ask me, you know, like, oh, it's pretty easy, you know, don't you just get on, up on stage and, like, make people laugh like that seems easy and it's like first off fuck you no it's not that easy yeah second off you know it's like you could go to school for like eight years and then you could do a residency and then you are a doctor you know the path with mm -hmm. comedy and stuff like this you know and voice acting you can do as well mm -hmm. and things like that like there's no path so like what is your motivation to follow this career path um there's a couple of things. Um, I mean, you saw, like, I put $50 in my gas tank today, which yeah. is 
double what I did three months ago. It's crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I and I can't tell you how many times um, I've heard after a show recently in the last like two weeks where people are like, thank you for that. I just needed to forget. Uh-huh. I just needed to forget. And that for me just means like job done. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Like you forgot for an hour that when you go back outside it's shitty. Uh-huh. Thank you for sharing. You know what I mean? Like you just made my whole, my life, you know what I mean? And so if I can do that, but I also feel like I have something to say. I feel like I have something really valuable to say Uh and I want to do it on a scale that's bigger than any radio station could have ever provided for me. You know what I mean? Like I think I hit the glass ceiling in radio Uh and that was it. I wasn't going to get anything. I wasn't going to become an Ellen K. And, uh, and I think with comedy, you make your own path. You know, you can do, you can do what, you are the only one that holds you back. Right. And so it's just a matter of, you just got to go find your people. Yeah. No, and like, that's, it's funny to hear you say that because I think you're actually, I've talked to several people, several comedians, you know, about like why they do this. And it's like a lot of times it's, you know, the money, the clout, you know, whatever. And it's like, I've always, so, uh, you don't know this, but both my parents are music stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, I have always been very much like, you don't know what other people are doing. And so sure. if you can give them that 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever, however long yeah. to forget about their own problems, yeah. you know, then like you're giving back to the world. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like the, obviously fame and money would be, you know, great if that ever comes. But that's just, it's just a consequence of what you want to exactly. do. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, like just brightening the world and maybe saving a life, maybe, to, you know, like yeah. wh- whatever it may be. It's like, to me, that is so much more fulfilling, yeah. you know? So like to hear you say that, it's funny because it's like, yeah, 100% exactly the same, well, good. you know, like from my end, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I can, I understand why she does it, guys, but you may not because you are always. I mean, listen, I'm not going to like throw down, I'm not going to be like, you want to spend $50,000 on me to do, uh, I'm not yeah. going to say no. Well, of course. Of course. I feel like I just lowball myself too, but listen, Netflix, if you can call me, <laughs> She is available. I am available. <laughs> but I think that just, that, that comes when you do the work, uh-huh. right? And then you, you've you got something to say. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, not to knock, like, the dick jokes, but those are a dime a dozen. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Like, Absolutely. We all, and they're fucking fun. <laughs> of course they're fun. But, like, I don't know. I feel like m- my message is very much, like, love yourself. Yeah. You know sure. what I mean? Like, eat, stop worrying about what everybody else is doing yeah. and worry about yourself. Yeah, and I, I think, and I, I tell comedians all the time, it's like, you can tell jokes about yeah. Like, you truly can. Yeah. I, I could talk about my dog like I talk about my dog all the time. Yeah. And, you know, like, of course, you're always going to have those jokes that are, like, anybody could have thought of them. But once you start, like, tapping into yourself and, yeah. you know, like, sharing your personal stories. Like, I do uh, jokes about my mom uh, and my aunt giving me meth, you know. And it's like, not everybody can relate to that. But as long as you paint a picture for the people, yeah. then they're part of it. Yeah. And then they not only get to know that story, but they get to know you a little bit more. You know what yeah. I mean? And, like, yeah. I, I've done jokes on, like, uh, on my parents' death and stuff like that. And while they're hit or miss because it's kind of dark, you know, yeah. but it's, like, it's still, it is spreading the message and the awareness, you mm-hmm. know, if you will, but just just in a positive light, you yeah. know. Yeah. You, you can look at everything, either positive or negative. That's yeah. up to you on how, how you perceive it. It's so know? interesting you say that. I literally last night was talking to a comedian friend of mine about uh, death jokes because he, he uh, experienced, because his, his father passed away recently. Okay. So, He's been working through it and does, like, the, I mean, just wonderful bits about grief and, like, what happens and how people react to you. Like, it's so good. Uh-huh. Um, so, so good. And I've been having these weird obsessive thoughts lately about death. Yeah. There's no reason that I should be, it's my brain going, like, you need to create chaos in your life right now. That's all that this is. So, like, I research, like, quotes and death, and it's, like, it's it's, it's disgusting. So, he he just checks in, but I was... <laughs> at Domingo's mic, actually, okay. on Tuesday, I was like, I'm thinking about death. And it is so jarring for people. Is, like, yeah. I know what I look like. You know what I mean? And I do not come across as, like, this dark, goth girl. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, like, very positive and uplifting. Uh-huh. And it's like, yeah, you know. And now, and he was like, well, that's all the more reason you should work harder to find jokes about it. Because right. people don't do it, and it is uncomfortable, uh-huh. and it is really hard. Exactly. So now I'm like, God damn. Like, oh, now I have to like rise to the challenge, and, like, do that. <laughs> which like every part of me is like, just run away. That's it's hard. It's too big. It's too big. But, right. but see, like, and that's the thing. It's like I've been working on these jokes about my parents for um, I don't know a couple of years, and it's like it's so hard because once you find the right way to do it, mm-hmm. it it's like it 
that makes sense. But mm-hmm. like whenever you're still working on it, and I do, I split my work time. Yeah. You know, and like so hard. It, it it is because like I tell my wife and she tells me and we talk all the time. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's for clearing that up. Right. <laughs> but it's like until people start to come for you, you know, come to shows for you, mm-hmm. you never know who's gonna be in the crowd. You never know what people are looking for in shows and stuff like that. Yeah. So so you can you can really lose a lot of money in that way and stuff like that. I mean yeah. that's like you don't know their their style of humor, nor do they know yours. You yeah. know, so like it's very hard because you may be onto something, but you you shut off a couple rooms and you're like, well, this is shit. You know, and but it might not be exactly. Yeah, it might not be. Yeah, and, and that's what's so tough, especially when it comes to those you mm-hmm. know kind of deeper meaning mm-hmm. jokes or you know whatever more heavy stuff. You're just like, I don't know the right way to do this, but yeah. we're gonna keep trying. You know, yeah. like one bomb at a time. Yeah. <laughs> I just you say that. I'm like, Oh, I can see my future for the next like year and a half just like bomb after bomb after bomb. Like, do I want to talk about death? Right. I'm like, do I want to keep talking about this? Do I? Like, well, and like, this is why I have therapy later today, guys. This be, is because why. of this show right now. She, she was like, I'm, I'm going to pre schedule this. <laughs> well, <laughs> too much death and too much Alex just fucked me up for a lifetime. <laughs> All right, we're gonna. You want to do another question? Sure. All right, these are. I like the questions. You guys, uh, I'm go, when you'll know where to ask these questions in any of the comments. Oh, do you want to pick one? No. no. <laughs> all right, all right. That's Ty again. He doesn't deserve more than one. How did he get more than one? That's crazy. Uh, well, because he posted, I think, like seven questions. I love like the dramatic like pause too. Yeah. Like, oh my god, Ty. This is amazing. Do you know him? Hi, guys. Yeah. You guys? You good? Yeah. Well, good? Uh, you know, he's an okay guy. Hi, the okay guy. Mm-hmm. This is my guy. All right. Let's see. This is a good one. What motivates you to get out of bed every morning? Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. We got to have something. <laughs> like that, I literally, sometimes, I don't know about you, but like sometimes I have a really hard time sleeping. Uh-huh. I'm like, if you can do it, if you can sleep tomorrow, you get coffee. <laughs> 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 I know that sounds crazy, but like, Sometimes I don't know. Mental health is like a it's 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 kind of a new thing to me in uh-huh. the forefront. And like, oh, this is something I struggled with a long time. I just didn't know what to call it. Right. And so now, like the insomnia and all this, thing, it's like, oh, if you can get out of bed every morning, you get to have coffee. <laughs> the coffee will you know be what so I mean? good. Right. I don't know. Like you see all those Pinterest memes where they're like. No, you should romanticize every part of your life, and every cup of coffee is the best cup of coffee you've ever had. Like it really is, and it does make a difference. It, oh, it really does. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that was from my wife. That's why it was so sweet. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've got a lot of them in there. What? Did, what about you? What motivates you to get up in the morning? Uh, not my wife. No, I'm oh. kidding. She motivates me every day. She's like, "Get up, asshole! Yeah. I made you coffee." Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, no, and that's true. Like she gets up, and I stay in bed for like five more minutes, and uh-huh. she's like, "Hey, your coffee." Do you scroll to TikTok and stuff like that? No, no, I try and go back to sleep. Okay. And, and it's weird though because like I hate sleeping. Like I hate it. I hate sleeping. I don't sleep well at night. Yeah. So and like I have really bad anxiety. Same. Yeah. It's so hard. Yeah. It's and it's it's weird though because like I don't have anxiety during the day, but it's like I go to lay down and my mind like starts spinning. And it's like mm-hmm. you're never gonna be good enough. And I'm like, what the fuck? I was good enough five minutes ago on stage, but you know. Right. Yeah. So it's like it's weird. What and, is that? I don't know. And it's like, why? It's like, why can't you like have these thoughts throughout the day so I can be like, oh yeah, no, you are good enough. Let me le- leave little notes for myself. Yeah. But what am I going to do? Leave little notes for myself in the dark and while I'm sleeping? Like, you're beautiful. Thanks. Yeah. You know, it's like, that's not going to work. It is weird. And I don't know about you, but like the, it, the second that my head hits the pillow, it's like suddenly I've got a million projects I can do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was, uh, so I told you about my car. Yeah. Um, I am, I'll lay in bed and be like, what if I have to do this? Or what if I cut the floors out and like I don't weld them back in right? And I'm like, what relevance does that have to me trying to sleep tonight? Yeah. It's so, and it's so hard. I, I'm, the hard part, I, do you do like, do you mess with melatonin or any of that stuff? Um, I have z Okay. Is that like, okay. That's okay. So <laughs> I'm like, that's like night. I'm trying to understand. So NyQuil without like the. Without the medicine. Okay. Yeah, it's just like. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
you, you don't do that every day though. No, but like it's it sometimes it gets so bad where I'm like I have to have like a stint of zero. Yeah. Okay. That makes me feel better because I do the same thing. I'm like, oh, I can't do Mel Tonic two nights in a row. But like sometimes I'm like, yeah, bad day tonight. You know, and then that sometimes you wake up and you're all groggy and shit. And right. Like, See, was this worth it? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and worth like, it? and that's the problem though. So it's like when I dream, I always have like really bad anxiety dreams. Mm-hmm. You know, like sometimes I'll dream about my parents. Sometimes I'll dream that like somebody broke into my house and like I'm trying to like hurt them to get them out of my house. Yeah. And you know, it's like it's always weird, dumb shit. But it's like almost every single night. But then like whenever I take like these Ethan and stuff like that, I'm dreaming. So I'm like, this is this is so much better. Yeah. Yeah. I go like two or three nights in a row like sleeping with shit like that with. Yeah, yeah. I can't like, wait for that cup of coffee. Yeah, it's like God, you can just do it. Yeah, I mean, you get to have coffee. You know what I mean? Now, how many cups of coffee do you drink a day, though? Um, usually only one, but then I switch to tea in the morning and tea at night. Okay. See, and what? So you guys uh, are gonna get a little secret. I asked Maggie. I said, "Hey, what would you like to drink?" You know, I just assumed alcohol because you know I'm an alcoholic or whatever. But Maggie's like, "Uh, water, coffee, and tea would be." <laughs> is that what I said? <laughs> okay, well, I have all of those. I'm going to check that off. I was, I was like, I've got beer, I've got wine, I've got whiskey, I've got vodka. And I guess it just <laughs> occurred to me that you and all of Friday, like, oh, we should be having a beer. It doesn't occur to me. I'm dead. And she got here, and I was like, do you need anything? She's like, I got my water. I'm good. I'm like, all right, cool. So I probably shouldn't have grabbed a beer then. Huh? Oh, you can have a beer. I don't care about that. No, I grabbed a water. Okay. I was like, we'll both be healthy. I don't know. Listen, I'm a voice actor. And so, like, I said voice is the last thing people are hydrated. Uh-huh. And so, if you don't get that, you just all get over there. And, and it hurts. It does, it yeah. Hurts. You know, see, I don't know if you can tell or not. I mean, being a, a voice actress, actor, would it still be actor? Yeah, yeah sure, whatever. Whatever. A voice um, actor. <laughs> <laughs> you probably can hear a lot of different things in people's voices that other people don't hear. Mm-hmm. So, you can probably hear the fact that I sound like a six-year-old woman who smoked all her life. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No. Anytime I go through a drive through and my wife like pisses her off, I'll be like, uh, can I get, you know, number two or whatever? And they'll be like, yes, ma'am. And I say, I will. Every <laughs> single time. Why does that piss her off? That's funny, though. I, I, because she's. You need to videotape that. I, I know. Like, that I, needs I, to be a TikTok. You need to do that. Yeah. And it's like, it's so, when I worked in pizza, it was really bad. I used to have long hair, but I would always keep it in a hat. He said, Dad, the pizza man's here, but the pizza man's a girl. I'm like, and I was just, he couldn't even hear my voice. I hadn't even said anything. Aww. I was just so, I was so baffled. Aww. I was like, my hair's in my hat. I'm like, I've got a beard. I'm like, I don't know what. Oh, you know. kids suck. Yeah, I was like, maybe, maybe it's just me. <laughs> oh, kids suck. But so, you know. They're so, like, awkwardly honest. I had a kid one time come up to me. Yeah, they're like weird. I don't, I, not, yeah, that, but, not that, not that, like, yeah, not that you like the like, honest. But like, what is in their like brain? Like so listen, one time a little kid, a five-year-old kid came up to me, and I'll never forget, her name's Willow, and I'll never forget her. We were in a, uh, I, I started roller skating, and, uh, and so I went to Laugh and Playland here in Austin, nice. and uh, this five-year-old kid came up because she was excited I had light up wheels like she did and sometimes uh-huh. she goes your teeth look like beaver teeth <laughs> i know i was like god damn it kid they're perfect i hate you i hope you fucking fall kid all i said i was like well the better to eat you is so you better skate did she and she did she ran away it was cute it was yeah. very cute see but that was a that was a good moment for you was it because yeah. i can't stop thinking about it and how yeah, like but, oh i need to go get braces and do this all over again but but, but it showed how human you are and you're like let me just do something sweet and watch the kids skate away. I'd have been like, fuck you, kid. Where's your dad? No, I chased her. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, we, we, went, we did a lap. Oh, yeah. I chased her. <laughs> she just had yeah. skate. She had <laughs> skate. <laughs> well, I mean, I'd you let can... her, yes. Oh, okay. That's what you do. I can move. I got moves. But you're taking skating lessons? Yeah, because I taught my nieces how to do it. So I was like, well, maybe I should up my game and learn it. Maybe I should learn how to do it with the skates on. <laughs> no, my mom was a phenomenal skater. She could like skate backwards and like my mom was super athletic. Cool. Yeah, she was like perfect for like all the sports. She was volleyball, softball, you know, and I like I'm athletic, but like I can't skate well, 
you know, like my brother can like skateboard or bang on the bong and, you know, do all the cool tricks. Oh. And, and I'm like, I don't know. Like, I didn't get that, that energy. You got the, I'm going to record while they do music and then I'll watch it later. You're a creative yeah. art. Yeah. Yeah, but like, I don't, I'm not really like that creative art kind of guy either because like, I'm so like, not good at following through with things either. That's what artists do. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah I nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> I figured it yeah. out. Yeah. See, my wife, she like, she'll come through. Like, you see my office right now. It's kind of, you know, it's yeah. collected. It's, to me, it's yeah. collected. Yeah. Uh, I used to have, like, every notebook laid out on the floor. Like, mm -hmm. no joke. And she was like, you should probably clean this up before you like, give it away to the customers. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Thank you. It looks phenomenal. Hey, thank you. But see, this, oh, you see all those notebooks right there? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, that was it. Those were oh, okay. all over the floor. Thoughts. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've got a notebook for absolutely everything. Yeah. And only one page of it needs to be cut out. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, like, uh, I can't say that just because I take on the project, I don't do service work. You know what I mean? I should probably pick like one or two. Only if following through is important to you. It is. Well, then, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, then you should probably change. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Well, as long as we figured that out. I'm glad we got there. Yeah, because see? She's going to therapy. This is my therapy. I actually, I just invite people over so I can ask them, how do I solve my problems? Yeah, did I help? <laughs> you did. Okay, good. Uh, and, but another problem that I feel like we need to address is the shirt. I've been thinking about it the whole time. Have you? Yeah. Are you, is it awkward to be wearing it right now? No, no, not awkward at all. Um, it's just funny. So uh, you guys, the listeners, um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, I, <laughs> I asked Maggie, I said, do you have merch? T-shirts and some shorts. Said, can I wear one for my podcast? She said, you know, they say. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I don't. I don't, but uh, I'm going to wear one anyway because I've already asked about it. So she said, all right. I said, now I'm curious. And she said, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> the suspense is there. So uh, she brought me a shirt to wear. And now I understand why she normally tell me because it's super funny. So, but now you have to explain. Well, it's how Describe what it says. Yeah. It, so it's a white t-shirt and it's got like where's the video? Rain, rainbow. Well, for your audio listeners, but oh, it says, yeah. but it says, um, I hug a homo. Have a great day. Smiley face. Um, with a big old smiley face, like a like you'd see in a Chinese food box. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, uh, <laughs> so I uh, I sing this song called Ninety Nine Focus Ads. Oh, and basically, yes. yeah. And so in the in the line of the song, I say. Alexa and Siri are listening. They have answered. Uh, um, they're listening, but sometimes they screw up. Like for example, the other day I bought a shirt, and now the ads want me to buy the same shirt. Right. Right. Which is a weird phenomenon that yeah. it's like get your shit together. Right. Like, <laughs> so I just bought that. I don't need. I don't, I don't need them all. Right. So the line is like, "What do you do with two shirts that say I hugged a homo, have a great day'?" Okay. And then yeah. everyone laughs at that thing. Yeah. It's so weird. Like, who would buy a shirt that <laughs> says that? <laughs> and then I say, like, never mind. I'll give it to you, the CEO of Chick Fil A. He can spoil my day for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, it's very nice. like, you know. Now I get it. Now I'm gonna wear it everywhere. Yeah. It's and, super positive. It's like I support gay rights, you know. But yeah. also like weird algorithms online, like. Right. And I touch on that a lot. So, but that's that's a great. And well, so. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wear it. But like I'm gonna cover it up, and then I'm gonna go and just hug random people, and then I'm gonna be like, <laughs> <laughs> your trench coat. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I'm not gonna have any pants on, just the shirt. I did. I want that so bad. I love that. Hashtag Maggie Mayfield. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. Uh, yeah. What's funny is like going on tour. I I do this whole pitch about it, and people laugh, and they think oh. But it's just an excuse for people to come up and say, hello, I do what you're set. Right. Uh, I want to support your art, which is really important because I'm about to make a music video okay. in a couple weeks. And it is so expensive to do this. <laughs> it's like, see, and you need a team of people and, and, and it, it costs money. Right. And so does, so does touring. You know, it costs money to travel from city to city. Yeah. And so when you support, when you buy a shirt, even if you just throw it away, like it, Absolutely, yeah. and, and if somebody wanted to snag a Happy Mountain Mayfield shirt, what would they do? Just come to my website, MaggieMayfield.com. Okay. Yeah. And 
and I'll put all that mean stuff in there somewhere. My wife will figure it out for me. <laughs> <laughs> she was telling me earlier, she's like, uh, you need to make sure that you ask Maggie, like, all of her socials and stuff like that, and then, like, put them on the screen. They're like, you're famous. You're like, you can still see you guys. Started, but, like, yeah. uh, and I was like, I think I can just, like, put, like, a live, you know, click button on there. I think, I think I can do that. And she's like, okay, fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, she'll figure it out. I yeah. promise. Her. Like, but it'll be there so you guys can just watch it. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, so that's uh that's what that's that's what I do. Perfect. Well I appreciate it. Um so I'm going to hold your stuff up one more time just so people can see that. I just want to point that out. So thank you very much. So support Maggie. She's great. Very funny comedian. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um but I don't I know you've got some things going on right now, so I don't want to keep you too long, but I do want to ask you um if you have you have any advice for somebody trying to get into this industry or any of those, you know, little niche sectors of, of the industry, uh, what would your advice be? Um, I, I'm sure you hear this all, you, you see this all the time when people are like, oh, you're a comedian, I've always thought about being comedy, right? I, what's your answer to that? To, to people so, wanting to do, yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah, just do it. Follow your curiosity. You only get one shot at life. And I'll tell you, just from experience, there's room for everyone. Oh, absolutely. Manage your expectations. Yes. But there's room for everyone. For sure. Yeah. Do it. Follow your curiosity. You're all going to, we're all going to die. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Like, exactly. we're all going to die. Like, yeah. it's too, life is too, it's, follow curiosity. Yeah, no, and like, that, and that's great advice. And like, I tell people all the time, like, do it once. You never have to do it again. You know, you do five minutes, do three minutes, do two minutes, get up there and tell a fucking one line. You know what I mean? But like, mm-hmm. how are you gonna know if you don't try it once? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like drinking Bud Light. Mm-hmm. You know, you gotta mm-hmm. you gotta give it that first little try. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you fall in love with it, but do it. Do it once. You never know if you're gonna try it again. Yeah, I always say like you gotta do twice as much. Try to do twice. Twice, exactly. Just to make sure. Right. <laughs> Just to make sure. <laughs> my grandma, um, growing up after my mom passed away, but my grandma, and she would always like she would try something and then like she'd get like this like sour look on her face, and then she'd take another bite. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, grandma, first bite was accurate. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, hey. I do it in like two separate settings. You know what I mean? Uh, sometimes I'm drunk the first time, or maybe I need to be drunk. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You, know, yeah. you don't know. But hey, and then if you enjoyed it when you're drunk, maybe you'll like it when you're sober. Exactly. You know? Even two. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Slowly but steady. You don't know. But, all right, Maggie. Well, I appreciate you. This has been awesome. This is great. Yeah. You're great. I Thank love what you're doing. You. Keep Thank going. You. Thank you. Um, I will post all of that stuff so you can follow Maggie. She's awesome. She's all over the place all the time. She's actually a huge inspiration for me. She's traveling a lot as well. So Aww. make sure that you go and follow her and her journey and seek her when she performs live. Yeah. This is it. Thanks, guys. Welcome to Life is Cooler with AC.